It's time for local stories from across the East. Local food. Local fashion. Local businesses. This is your home for local. This is the East's Daily Download on Eastern North Carolina CW. Hello and welcome to the East Daily Download. This is a very special Best of the East Daily Download edition. Now, we uh, have been routinely airing a very special story every week. It's called The Loving Home. I'm sure you've seen it if you watch the show. Uh, joining us today in the studio to talk about that is a very special guest. Please welcome in Angie Casada, hey! the 10 o'clock anchor in East North Carolina CW. Hey, and everyone the host of A Loving Home. Yes. So tell the fine folks at home who have not maybe seen it or just kind of getting into seeing it, yeah. all about A Loving Home. Okay, well if you haven't seen it, you're slacking because it's amazing. No, um, A Loving Home is awesome. It's something that I just decided to bring to the WNCT family um, where I have the opportunity to hang out with kids that are unfortunately in the foster care system. Um, just last year there was a little um, close to 17,000 kids wow. that were removed from their homes wow. here in North Carolina. And um, I get to hang out with them for the whole day. And sometimes they'll tell me, hey, Ange, I've never been to a zoo. So I'll bring them to the zoo and we'll hang out. Um, I have my awesome photographer that joins us and I get to document just how they are, um, just personality, um, getting to know them, what they seek in a family. And um, sometimes the conversations get pretty real. Yeah. You, know, they're, you have the 16 year olds that lived a, a real heavy yeah. life. And um, sometimes you just have the sweetest ones that they tell you your favorite color is blue and they just want a mom to love. So I get to hang out with them and every t Tuesday I actually have the opportunity to showcase them on WNCT as well as here on the East Daily Download where we show you, the viewers, just a little glimpse of who they are and hoping that you guys could possibly adopt them. So we have a whole series of some of the best of A Loving Home that you'll be seeing today. There's a couple other stories also, but primarily we're focused on A Loving Home today. And um, anything else you need to let the people know? Um, if you are interested in adopting or maybe you're just debating if you want to be a foster parent, I really encourage you guys to just check out our website, wnct.com slash A Loving Home, where you can have all the information on how to get started. A lot of people think it's super expensive, but it's not. Um, all it is is just taking your taking the first step to uh, look into it and try it. So if you're even thinking about it, I just encourage you to do your do research. <laughs> uh, okay, well, let's get going. Let's take a look at the first uh, loving home. A good book. Twilight, I li I'm reading the series right now. I'm on the third book. And the sun. It's just, I don't know, it relaxes me. It just takes my mind off of things. Are the little things Lexi enjoys the most. And although we met outdoors. I hate outdoors, I'll tell you that. It disgusts me. Lexi considers herself a girly girl. Lexi prides herself on her work ethic. Because I have good grades, A's and B's. Most of the time it's all A's. So, I mean, yeah. So you like school? Yeah, I love it. Really? What's your favorite subject? Math and reading. What would you say is something that makes you really happy? Family. Like a nice family figure. Like going out to eat with the family, like having dinner together, doing activities together. Someone that loves, supports you, and is there for you whenever you really need them, you know? Lexi believes if she doesn't find her family soon, things will only get harder. Lexi, you're 13 years old. Mm -hmm. Why is it so important that you find your forever family? Um, because all of the, like up the past eight years, I've been with that one, moving from foster home, foster home, group home to group home. Um, I'm just ready to stick with one family. Through no fault of her own, Lexi was forced to have to grow up with a tough past that made her feel very lonely and upset, like no one cared. See, I'm used to being let down, you know? Like, get my hopes up, then drops, you know? So why is it so important that you find this Um, because I need someone on my side, you know? Like, I need someone there to love me and, like, not say, oh, you did made a mistake, goodbye, you know? But no matter what, Lexi says she'll never lose sight of who she is. If they take me in, Love me for me, not me trying to be someone else. I'm Lexi. 
And then that's all I'm gonna be as a wife. Watch 9 on your side news anywhere, anytime with Live Stream 9. If your business would like to be featured in our new show, The East Daily Download, contact Joel Bullard at 252-355-8520 or jbullard at wnct.com today. And watch The East Daily Download weekdays at 7 on Eastern North Carolina CW. In mid-October, I had a chance to participate in the STEM on the Green event at the University of Mount Olive. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, and it allows area grade school students to explore career options in a wide variety of studies. While attending the STEM on the Green event, students learned about robotics, chemistry, biology, and yes, even weather. The students always are enthusiastic, and they had great questions for me. We talked about forecasting, historic weather events like Hurricane Florence, and the 1984 Carolina tornado outbreak, and we may have even a few new recruits for our WNCT 9 on your side first alert weather kids program too. The kids left with a new understanding of science and math, which will serve them well in future studies. I want to thank the University of Mount Olive for their hospitality. It's always a pleasure to visit. From the WNCT 9 on your side first alert weather school, I'm Chief Meteorologist Jerry Jackson, class dismissed. Terrell's ability to build, connect, and navigate through Technic Lego bricks comes as second nature. It's just the things you see that people have built and broke again and put into different maps so other people can build them. It's just remarkable. Those words coming from a child taken from his biological family, moved from home to home, now hoping to put the pieces together forming yeah. a family. The ideal family for Terrell would definitely be a family that can fulfill that desire in, in, in that dynamic that he's looking for. Terrell desires stability and permanency. Because I don't like moving. I don't want to be living alone. That and just for support. He's a child that has so much potential. Like, you can really see it in him. You can see all the things that he can be. You can see, like, his future. You can really, like, look past him and see all those things. And so for him to find a family, for me, is like the first step to him being whatever and anything he wants to be. Something that he's already thinking about. What would you, what do you want to be when you get older, do you know? Entrepreneur. Ooh. Or an electrical engineer, of course. Nice. If you're an entrepreneur, what would you want to do? Like. Probably build certain things. Don't know what yet. He is. He's a very unique kid. Can you decorate it now? Oh, are you adding a platform to it? And he has a very outgoing personality. His sense of humor is to die for. Tiffany Lee, Terrell's caseworker, is confident Terrell will be a light to his adoptive family. He is a hoot. He is so fun. He is so funny. And he's so bright. He's creative, you know, so a lot of joy. He will be, be he will bring a lot of joy and entertainment to the families. This is Wesley. Like many kids his age, he enjoys building. What's your coolest Lego that you ever put together? Describe it for me. Um my police set, my police um, helicopter um, Lego. Wesley did a really good job with his interview, but one of the neat things about Weather Kids is that you never know the answers you're going to get when you ask a question. All right, very good. That was good, Wesley. Want to talk about some weather? Um, no, sir. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That was great. <laughs> you know, kind of the whole point of the weather, kids, we've got to talk about weather at some point. So why don't we talk a little bit about weather? Is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. <laughs> when Wesley did finally settle in to do the weather, he called on right away. So today right here is going to be um, a rainy day. We don't know if it's going to rain or it's going to be bad, 
but today we're gonna know if it's a snow if it's a snowstorm. Wesley may actually tackle weather forecasting as a career one day. I think I was gonna like point like right here, mm -hmm. but then when I started pointing right here, it was wrong. But when I just point at the camera, it's gonna be right. I really enjoyed our time with Wesley, and I wish him all the best in his future endeavors. Now, if your child would like to become a WNCT 9 on your side, first alert weather kid, send me an email to jjackson at wnct.com, and I'll explain how everything works. For the WNCT 9 on your side, first alert weather kids, I'm Chief Meteorologist Jerry Jackson, class dismissed. <music> So kids will tell you exactly what they think, whether you want to hear it or not. Do you like ketchup on a hot dog? Oh, no way. Uh, they'll let you know what's on there, what's on their mind. Pugsley Shirley is weird. Hopefully the viewers on occasion can actually learn a little something from weather kids. These kids are great teachers, many of them that come in. I'm nice, I'm funny, and I love spending time with people. Like going places, like fun, 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 or out to eat together, or play games, board games, like Twister, Monopoly, and Connect Four. I'm really good at Connect Four and Uno. Alexis knows how to have a good time and finding new games to play. She also enjoys learning. I do like ELA and science. Why do you like science? Because half the time you can do experiments, so that's what's the fun part about it. Her interest in science and love for kids is drawing her to the medical profession. Actually, I really want to be, I want to be a doctor or I want to deliver babies. Alexis says it would be her responsibility to care for the little ones. The only reason I want to do that is because I love babies for number one and I'm always, it's always good to protect them and second, you always, you always be there for them for no matter what. Alexis loves being outdoors and enjoys drawing. What do you like to draw? It depends when I get bored. Sometimes it's like a character, cartoon characters like SpongeBob, Patrick, and um, yeah, World Grats. I know you World Grats. Her ideal family would be loving and nurturing with a female figure. I want somebody who loves me and cares for me no matter what. I also want a little sister. She would do great with younger siblings, and although she's only 13, Alexis is scared time is running out. Because I'm starting to get too old, older. I'm getting older. And it's trying, it's, trying, it's trying to find a new family. It could be harder because I'm getting older. Alexis needs a family that will support her interests and talents and provide stability. Make me really happy. That's what it will mean to me. Make me excited. Makes, make me feel like I have somebody. On April 5th and 6th of 1936, one of the deadliest tornado outbreaks in U.S. history occurred throughout several southern states. One of the strongest of the storms, an F5 tornado, hit the city of Tupelo, Mississippi. With estimated winds well over 200 miles an hour, the Tupelo storm virtually destroyed 48 city blocks, claiming 217 lives in the process. Many of these were in the residential district of the city. A number of tornado oddities were recorded with this storm, including accounts of pine needles driven into the bark of trees by extreme winds. One of the survivors of the storm was a one-year-old child by the name of Elvis Aaron Presley. From the WNCT 9 on your side, First Alert Weather School, I'm Chief Meteorologist Jerry Jackson, class dismissed. One of my favorite authors says we belong to each other. Um, and I think as a, as humanity and as humankind, we belong to each other. Like we, we take care of each other, we attach to each other, just even saying hello to the person at the supermarket. Like you're forming that small attachment. Heather Powers has been fostering for almost 10 years now with her husband Lawrence, even adopted a young boy. So she knows firsthand the power of attachments in this process. And I couldn't imagine my life without those attachments and how much they've enriched me and made me who I am. The power of building that bond can sometimes be taken for granted. And throughout this A Loving Home series, after meeting families who are fostering kids and those who have adopted, I've learned that building attachments with these children is valuable to their future. 
you can never get those back, those ones that they lost, but you can build new ones and, um, and teaching them to trust, you know, and you have to discipline and you have to reward and you have to go through all the same things you do with biological. Sarah Golden also knows from experience after adopting two girls. Once that stability is there, the attachment just happens. I decided to do even more research, and according to the Encyclopedia of Early Childhood Development, studies show that young children and teens rely on the attachments they make as they get older. They're better able to control their emotions in stressful situations, and overall, they develop better social skills. Bringing a child into your home um, and letting them form an attachment, and even if it's for a short period of time, um, even if you're just kind of like a small step along the journey, maybe in that time frame, you showed a kid what um, maybe a, a stable home looks like, what a peaceful sleep, a restful sleep looks like. Um, maybe you inspired them to understand you can go to college and you can be what you want to be and do the things that you would like to do. Maybe in that moment you just inspired them to, to just say hello to a stranger. Um, it, it's small victories and small steps for children. Bottom line, you can make a difference, whether it's short-term stay or permanent adoption. Your attachment and what you have to offer matters. They're the future, they're the present, and for, for them to be empowered and to do things themselves, we have to allow that, but we have to let them attach to us. We have to put aside our fears on it um, and our worries because we are already attached to things and to people and stuff, so let's allow a, a child an opportunity to do that. Is he putting me on two feet? Our camera sparked Tommy's curiosity. Tommy would bring um, just the joyful chemistry and cares charisma of a seven-year-old. I mean, he just is so fun. Um, like I said, he's just full of questions and inquisitive, and he likes to take things apart, and he likes to, to know what's happening. For a little guy, he's, he had a rough start, a really, really rough start. Um, and any family that is lucky enough to, ha to have him will need to understand that. I know that Tommy thrives in a home with stability, um, um, predictability. He needs to know what's coming, what's happening, and a lot of structure. Um, and just a lot of love. Karen Getman also works with 16-year-old Emily and knows firsthand the desire she has to be in a loving home. Because <laughs> I've known her a long time and she just, she wants it so much. She wants a family. I need a stable home in person that when I get upset I can talk to. She deserves it, you know, she's, she's in the system for no fault of her own and she's been in the system and it's, it's, she just deserves more. With no choice of her own, Emily is forced to mold herself into the woman she dreams of becoming. Emily will bring so much energy and fun, um, laughter. She's getting to that age where she's going to need some money to help her learn um, what it's like to be a, an adult. Um, to, to give her that support that she will need as she gets older and becomes more, becomes an adult. And 13-year-old Damon hopes to serve his country one day. Helping out the country, saving the country, being out, out on my own sometimes and see what it's like to be in the army. His independence and heart to serve will require a special kind of family. A family that um, is active and what I mean by active is um, they like doing different things like they go places together and Damon likes simple things. Damon loves the outdoors animals and would like a family who has other kids. I see him as a young man with resilience and strength and dedication. First step, visit Children's Home Society of North Carolina's website. Scroll down to the event section so they can find the information the meeting to attend. Attend that meeting and collect as much information as you can. After you get the information and you're feeling good about moving forward with the process, then you can actually apply online, pay for the background check online. To complete a background check, 
it's going to cost you $20. After the background check is completed and you're approved, it's game time. Then you'll have a meeting with the licensing specialist. After you meet with the licensing specialist, then you'll receive an invitation to math classes. This is where your training begins. So the math classes aren't to train you to teach you how to be a parent, but it's teaching you how to parent children with trauma. Um, also, you have support groups that you end up, you know, connecting with doing in math classes. That will be a six to eight month process to complete all of your hours required. If you're looking to do basic foster care, that's 30 hours credited of training. To do therapeutic foster care, that's 40 hours. It's broken down in sessions. Classes are held on Tuesdays and Thursdays, or you can attend a Saturday training class that covers two sessions in one day, which will give you two credited hours. Once you've completed all of your hours of training, you'll officially receive your license. That's when you'll be able to actually move forward with it, doing foster care and uh, adoption after you get your license. And if you're looking to adopt right away, the process can vary in time. The adoption process can take place probably good, probably about a good two, two to three months sometimes. Um, and it really, again, it's really case by case. So all in all, if you're looking to foster a child or adopt one, getting your license is the first step to a beautiful, rewarding journey of becoming a loving home. Well, that's going to wrap up this episode of the East Daily Download, a special best of edition where we focus primarily on a loving home. Yes. Thank you for being here. This is actually your first time in studio. It guesting, is. Isn't it? I know. Why it's don't so we exciting. Have you here more? I don't know. You got, they're slacking. Well, I, I'm get guilty. Them in here. Um, but tell everybody one more time how they can find more information. Out Absolutely. About if you want more information or if you're just curious a little bit, just do your research. Visit wnct.com slash a loving home. That's it for the best of the East Daily Download. We'll see you. So join us on Wednesday for an all new The East Daily Download on Eastern North Carolina CW.